And now we're going to take a look at graph and rational functions in full. So each of the five steps that we previously looked at, holes, vertical isotopes, horizontal isotopes, intercepts, and evaluating functions. So let's go ahead and start off our um, question by factoring, as always. So are there any holes? Two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to 1. So 4 and 5, and I need the 4 to be negative because it needs to be positive 1. So writing that out, x minus 4, x plus 5. On the denominator, let's factor out negative 3 because I like my x squared to be positive for 1. And also 3 goes into everything in there. So taking out negative 3, I'm going to be left with x squared minus, because you're going to change the sign because you took a negative out. So minus 8x uh, plus, because you took a negative out, 16. And check in to just make sure that when I multiply it back in, I get the original function, which I do. So I'm good. All right, so let's go ahead and factor that out. So two numbers that multiply to positive 16 and add to negative 8. That's going to be 4 and 4. And I need both of them to be negative because negative times a negative is positive. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So writing that out, it's going to be x minus 4 and then x minus 4 again. And then on the top, I had x minus 4 and x plus 5. Perfect. All right, so are there any holes? Did I remove any part of the equation? Yes, I just did. So x minus 4 equals 0 is going to be my hole, so x is equal to 4. All right, vertical isotopes. After you take out the holes, is there any vertical isotopes? So you set the denominator equal to 0. So divide by negative 3 is 0, then x minus 4, you take it to the other side, it's going to be positive 4. We cannot have vertical isotope and then also have a hole. So there is no hole because that is the vertical isotope. So there is no hole due to it being a vertical isotope. There's already an isotope there. There will not be a hole because there's no graph there. Okay, so there's no hole. All right, next step, horizontal isotope. So I just took the notes that I needed because I can see the numerators are exactly the same. The powers, the highest powers, excuse me, are exactly the same. 2 is equal to 2. And so remember, when they're exactly the same, you take the coefficients of the highest power. So positive 1 over negative 3. So that's going to simplify to negative 1 third. All right, so your intercepts. Remember, you factor, you set the numerator equal to 0 after establishing the domain. So that's what we need to go do. So we've factored. So we're going to write down our factored form. So y equals x plus 5, x minus 4 over negative 3, x minus 4, x minus 4. All right, then I'm going to find my domain. So remember, my domain, right, cannot be equal to 0 on the bottom. So on the bottom, I have x equals 4, because you're taking the negative 4 to the other side. x cannot equal 4 both times. Okay, so that's my domain. So now I set the numerator equal to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0, take it to the other side, so x minus 5. And as long as that's not what I have in my domain, I'm good. So this is an x-intercept, and right in coordinate form, it happens at negative 5, 0. All right, let's take a y-intercept. Y-intercept, correct that, is x equal to 0, so it's always the opposite. So I'm going to look at the unfactored form of this because I just need to see all the x's, and anything with an x is 0, so I'm just going to ignore all of that and only look at the numbers. So the things that I don't have x on is negative 20 over negative 48. Simplifying that, that becomes positive 5 over 12. And I'm going to make this a decimal because I'm actually going to plot this, so I need to know decimal-wise what it is. So the y-intercept is 0 for the x value, 5 over 12, which in decimal in form is 0 comma to the nearest tenth, 0.4. Right. So I've done step 4. Step 5 is evaluating points to the left and right right, of your isotope. So looking at my isotope, I need 4. So the number is 4. I need numbers on the left and right for 4. Before I do that, let me go ahead and put all the information I have. So my vertical isotope up and down is at 4. My horizontal one, let's make that a decimal because what is negative 1 third? Negative 0 0.3. So horizontally, go to negative 0 0.3 and you're going to make an isotope there. What else do I have? I have my x and y intercepts. So let's start with my y intercept is negative 5, 0, so go to negative 5, 0, put a dot. My y-intercept is 0, 0 0.4, so as close as you can get it, put a dot. And now I need some other numbers because I need to graph this. I need to know what it looks like. So left and right of 4, I'm picking random numbers. Okay, so 2, 3, that's the left, and on the right-hand side, 5, 10. And I don't need that many numbers to see what's going on. All right, now I'm going to evaluate that function. So remember, put that in the calculator and see what it is. So type the whole function with parentheses where you see the x's, and then we're just going to put in the numbers. So the first number is 2, what's that to the right nearest tenth? Second number is 3, what's that to the nearest tenth? Third number is 5, what's that to the nearest tenth? And last number is tenth, what's that to the nearest tenth? Yes, to the nearest tenth, this is what I get. 
right? Now we're going to plot those points, so 2 and 1.2, to the best of your ability, 3 and 2.7, 5 and negative 3.3, um, 10 and negative 0 0.8. And that's what the graph is doing. So kind of join the points, don't pass the isotopes. So it looked like this, that way, and that, that way with an isotope, and this one will look like this, and that with an isotope, okay? All right, and that's how you graph isotopes, so five steps. Now we're going to evaluate the end behavior of a vertical isotope. The limit as x approaches, what number is my vertical isotope? Four from the left of my function is equal to what? The limit as x approaches four from the right of my function is equal to what? And therefore, does the limit as x approach four of my function exist? So let's take a look at it. So if I'm coming, following the graph, two from the left, where am I going? Positive infinity. From the right, following the graph, where am I going? To negative infinity. What is the limit as x approaches 4 of this function? You tell me. Complete example 2 as additional practice.